You are perhaps wondering what the Bob Sterry School of Burglary could possibly be. It's a reasonable question. No, it's not an invitation to fund an actual school for the instruction of nocturnal thievery. A risky, if not to say illegal, proposition. And it is certainly not an implication that I condone burglary. Merely the title of a short essay, ironically dealing with street lighting. I'm sure you can see the connection. Hi. I am Bob Sterry, and the Bob Sterry School of Burglary is a collection of essays, stories, and poetry I have written over the past 15 years, including one story about a very unlikely British spy. Putting them all together in a book that an interested person would want to buy is involving a book designer, a publishing guide, a proofreader, a writer of a foreword, at least two reviewers, and, oh yes, a printer all of which I have already engaged. Some time and expense are naturally expended, and I know almost to the cent how much the exercise is going to cost, which is why I am talking to you today. But wait, you are saying, why should I be involved? Why should I be supporting the production of yet more printed words? Well, since you ask, here are two audible reasons, two pieces from the collection. And of course, depending on just how much you want to be involved, there are the donation level rewards. But let me read you those pieces. Anyone who keeps bananas in their house will instantly recognize this phenomenon. A short poem called my personal fruit fly. It is September, and my personal fruit fly has returned from his long vacation and is happily perched on the rim of my wine glass, politely hopping off whenever I reach for a sip, quietly resuming his place when I set down my glass. I can hardly resent his microscopic intrusion, especially when I find that he and a partner have ended their wandering, keratinous lives and are now jointly denting the meniscus of my economy class, Chardonnay. And this poem contains elements of education, teenage love, chemistry, and cooking, and it's called rhubarb. I learned about oxalic acid at 17, when, less than anxious for yet more information, more notes on a chalkboard in a malodorous, sulphurous schoolroom, hastily copied in pencil, scribbled then, and required to be transformed later into copper plate, almost textbook pages to be judged as adequate or not. Oxalic acid, not as deadly, but in a close league to the clear, deadly liquids held in the dusty, skull-marked bottles within easy reach of any manic schoolboy. Dusty bottles in a rack, in a rack on a bench, on a bench where I sat, where I sat wondering why my mind, my sharp, juvenile mind, would never grasp molecular valence theory quite as well as the taste of a girl's lips, the smell of her hair, the ring of her laugh, the answer to a question in her eyes. Years later, when that girl had gone, I read that oxalic acid is found in rhubarb leaves. Pie making always brings such fascinating memories. I love to write and use serious and comic satire and I have a desire to entertain and intrigue as many people as I can. In helping to produce this book you are helping this, if not noble cause, a worthwhile one. Don't hesitate to contact me should you want more information or just to ask, how's it going? 
Thank you.